final talk, um, uh, Jun Yang is a uh, research associate professor, and she's going to talk about understanding the mechanism underlying cone rod dystrophy. And you get you get extra credit points for being the last person. Let's we'll see if Randy can get that hooked up. That's Spiro's Trail at uh, Mid Mountain in uh, Park City. Perfect. Okay, so uh, good afternoon. So I'm Jun Yang. Um, so first, I would like to thank David Quizard and uh, Nick Mamlas for giving me this opportunity to present our research here. So the topic of my presentation today is uh, understanding the mechanism underlying cone and rod dystrophy. So the long-term research interest in my lab is to understand the mechanisms of inherited retinal degenerations. And eventually, hopefully, we can find some uh, effective treatments for these diseases. So uh, during the past uh, eight years, we have been focusing uh, Usher syndrome type 2. Uh, we use a uh, mouse model to study this disease. Uh, uh, Usher syndrome is a, a, a syndromic disease, so it's a RP, it's a, a syndromic type of RP uh, together with hearing loss and the vestibular dysfunction. So we found that the, the uh, genes that encoding that proteins, uh, the cost of genes encoding proteins form a complex. So we, we study this complex in both uh, photoreceptors and also here cells. So today I will not talk about uh, our research on Usher syndrome. And we, we already published a series of uh, papers. So if you're interested, you can just uh, read our papers. So now we just uh, want to talk about our research on cone rod dystrophy. So about uh, four years ago, we became interested in cone rod dystrophy and uh, started a new research project. Uh, compared with uh, RP, uh, cone rod dystrophy, uh, CRD is uh, a rare disease. So it affects um, one in 30 to 40,000 people worldwide. However, compared to RP, uh, CRD has more severe problems. So <coughs> what's CRD? So uh, uh, and like RP, RP affects the raw photoreceptors first and then cone photoreceptors. And CRD affects the cone photoreceptors first, and then rod. And sometimes CRD can uh, affect both rod and the cone photoreceptors at the same time. Uh, and also CRD can be uh, inherited uh, with all three modeling patterns of inheritance. Um, so although right now uh, up to 30 cause genes has been identified for CRD, and the genetic causes <coughs> of more than uh, half of CRD cases are unknown. And for the identified genes, quite a few, we don't really know their biological functions or very limited information about their bi biological functions are known. So in my lab, we interested in C8 of 37 uh, gene, uh, which was identified by Estorado Coscano et al. in 2012. And since then, uh, more than uh, eight more papers have been published uh, to report more C8 of 37 mutations and also patients in different ethnic groups. So uh, here I just show you uh, the mutations identified uh, right now in C8 of 37 gene. So uh, we can see that the mutations are distributed uh, throughout the gene, and uh, they include uh, uh, splice side mutations, uh, nonsense mutations, uh, mesense mutations, and also frame shift mutations. Uh, and these mutations can cause, I guess, oh, I can see, uh, CRD uh, and RP, and also RP together with uh, early uh, macroplasty, and also you can see it also can, affect, uh, can cause barbido syndrome. 
So Babido syndrome is another syndromic form of RP, which is characterized by RP together with obesity, uh, renal problems, polydactyly, and uh, uh, cognitive deficiencies. So at the protein level, uh, this, this protein has 200 ascendant amino acids in humans. However, the challenge to understand the function of this protein is that there is no known functional domains. And also, there is no known similar proteins. So uh, right now, this protein uh, is just named by the position of the gene in uh, human uh, chromosome 8. So, but when we align the C8 oxygen 7 protein sequence from mammals to uh, lower eukaryotes, uh, we found that the C-terminal region of this protein is really conserved. So indicate that uh, this protein probably play a role uh, in a very important uh, process. Okay, so what's the, fun uh, the, uh, the, the function of this protein and why mutations in this gene can cause retinal degeneration? So first, uh, we, we just set out to uh, set up an animal model to study this, this question. So we uh, set out to generate the C8 of 7 knockout in mice using CRISPR Cas9 technology. So uh, by using two small kind of RNAs uh, targeting exon 1 and exon 5 of the gene, we generate uh, three uh, uh, mutant mouse lines. So the first one has a six base pair deletion in exon 1, that also including this translation start code on ATG. And the second uh, has a, seven, a 10 base pair deletion in exon 5. And third has a, a large deletion between exon 1 to exon 5. And then we did the immunoblotting analysis. We found that all three mutant mouse lines are uh, they don't express C8 of 7 full length or truncated proteins indicate that these three lines are complete KO mice. Okay, so then we uh, assess the retinal function of these knockout mice using, uh, electro, uh, using electroretinogram ERG at five weeks of age. So we can see that uh, uh, all three Mice. So the, the red color is the one line, green color, different line, the third line is blue color. And also the, the dashed line is mutant uh, mice. So we can see that uh, all three mutant knockout mice have uh, about 50% uh, reduction uh, for scotopic AV uh, amplitude and also 50% reduction of photopic B wave amplitude indicating uh, red, uh, both rod and cone this function. Um, and then uh, we, we just focus on one more slide because this, the three looks the same, the same retina phenotypes. So we focus on one mouse line, we test the ERG at different ages, and we found that uh, the, uh, both uh, rod and cone, this function, show a progressive trend. And then we asked whether these mice have retinal degeneration because sometimes like, um, the retinal function has a problem that uh, the photoreceptors, is, the number is okay, they're still alive. So uh, first uh, we uh, use this non-invasive approach, the OCT approach, uh, to study the retina. Uh, so compared to the control retina, uh, we found that in the knockout retina, at both uh, two months and six months of age, uh, the, this uh, out segment and inner segment junction line is missing. And also, uh, at the six months of age, uh, this photoreceptor nuclear layer is much thinner compared to the control, indicating retinal degeneration. Okay, and then we did the, the standard histological analysis uh, using light microscopy and the result just confirmed our OCT finding. So you can see that the outer segment layer and this outer nuclear layer uh, get thinner with age. So at the beginning, they are fine compared to the control. And eventually, the outer segment is disappeared. OK. Uh, however, uh, we found that uh, 
both female and the male mice, they don't show obesity up to six months of age. And also, uh, they don't show these polydactylic things, which are characterized uh, uh, as uh, Babido syndrome patient uh, symptoms. So, so in summary, for this part of our study, so we successfully generate the C8 oxy 7 knockout mouse models, and this mouse, uh, these mice show both rod and cone dysfunction and progressive retinal degeneration. However, they don't show uh, other uh, symptoms outside the retina. So, these models are good animal model to study retinal degeneration uh, in. C8 of 7 deficient patients. Okay, so with these mice, we ask the question, so why C8 of 7 mutations or knockout can cause retinal degeneration? So what we first uh, look at the exam the photoreceptor morphology by scanning electron microscopy. So at the both postnatal day 10 and 30. So, um, Compared to the uh, control photoreceptors, we saw this out, out, uh, the knockout uh, photoreceptors show abnormal outer segments, which is uh, uh, here. So these outer segments show uh, are thicker and uh, um, less uniform in diameter and also less densely packed. And then we want to know what's happening inside this outer segment. So we did the transmission electron microscopy. So uh, this is uh, uh, just the control uh, of the segment. Uh, so as expected, uh, we see uh, membrane discs are tightly stacked and they horizontally aligned. And in the knockout of the segment, we see some membrane this is probably not this, it's just membrane things. They're very long and the vertically aligned. And uh, apparently, we do see these uh, membrane walls in this outer segment region, and also this uh, multi vesicular body like structure. And however, the other uh, cellular structures and also the compartments are normal, so such as this connecting ceiling basal body, mitochondria, and ciliary rulet, and even uh, ER, power geobritis, and also the synaptic terminus they, they may find. So when we zoom up to look at the <coughs> membrane discs in the knockout of the segment, we see that the, this is horizontal membrane. They, they kind of grow, uh, over, overgrow at the plasma membrane region, and then turn vertically. And also, we will try to look at the uh, horizontal, uh, horizontal disks and the vertical disks, and we don't see plasma membrane in between. So this suggests that uh, the uh, horizontal and the vertical disks, they are wrapped by plasma membrane inside the same outer segment. So this can explain the phenotype we saw in scanning, uh, scanning electron microscopy. The outer segment is thicker and uh, less uniform. Okay. Jim, I just want to clarify that the, heteros the heterozygous knockouts look like a wild type. Yes. Okay. Uh, because this disease is, uh, um, for C8 officer 7 mutant mice, is uh, autosomal recessive okay. genetic okay. disease. So for the height mice, we, we, we see the, the, not really phenotype, we see the structures is similar as a uh, wild type. Yeah. So we consider this control. So, and then we did a series of uh, immunoblotting analysis. And then we found that uh, uh, many outer segment membrane proteins and associated proteins, their uh, expression levels decreased, uh, which I mark here in red. <coughs> um, and other proteins, they, they, they're okay. They have the same, the normal expression level in the knockout photoreceptors. And also, I mark these proteins, I circle these proteins in green. So these proteins are encoded by known CRD causative genes. So this indicate that the, uh, the mechanisms of uh, CRD pathogenesis in patients with C C8 of 7 mutations probably shared among uh, patients with mutations in these genes. Okay. 
So, uh, and also in the field, it's known that uh, the RDS uh, GAP2 and the CNGP1 are involved in organizing the outer segment disks uh, in photoreceptors. So, um, the association between the RDS and the RAMO1 oligomers with this CNGP1 can link the membrane disks uh, to the plasma membrane. And also the self-interaction of GAP2 can, uh, is responsible for disk stacking. So uh, we found that uh, uh, the reduction of GAP2, CNGP1, and RDS, so that can explain why we see that the uh, uh, membrane disk misalignment in the non-cut outer segments. So now we know why this um, C8R37 now cut can cause retinal degeneration. However, we want to know now uh, why C8R37 now cut can cause outer segment membrane protein reduction. So this is uh, uh, we still in the process try to understand this question. So right now there is no clear answer to that, but I just share with you our preliminary data. So first we want to know where C8 of 37 protein localized in photoreceptors. So we did the immunostaining of C8 of 37, and we found that the green signal is from C8 of 37 staining. So we found that this protein is localized throughout photoreceptors, but it's not in outer segment. However, uh, in the non mass, we also see this kind of signal pattern. So we, in that case, like this, indicate that the signal we see in this control retina is probably from um, specific uh, C8 of 7 signal, but also mixed with non-specific, uh, known non-specific uh, signals. So to verify the localization of C8 of 7 in photoreceptors, we collaborated with Arshavsky's lab. So we did uh, a tangential sectioning of our retina, and then we examined where C8 of 7 is localized in every uh, cons consecutive retina sections. And here is the result. So basically, this RDS labels where our segment is. And then the for uh, trans fosducing is localized where photoreceptor is exactly out of segment. So we see that the C8 of 7 is in the inner segment, not out of segment. So because like we know knockout of C8 of 7 can reduce all the segment memory proteins, so what's going on? So it's possible that we know that the, C the all segment memory protein is synthesized in the inner segment and is a transport to the outer segment. So that means something went wrong during this process, synthesized and then transport to the outer segment in the cable mice. Okay, so we did the email staining of all, not all, just like uh, several of these outer segment membrane proteins, we know they are they reduced in the cable mice. However, we found that most of them are just localized normally in the outer segment. So this indicates that the C8 of C7 is probably not involved in the trafficking to the outer segment. And also we found that the outer segment membrane protein reduction occurs at the P5, postnatal day 5, during development. And at this time point, um, photoreceptor is still differentiating, so the connected cilium is forming, but the outer segment has not been formed. So at this stage, there's no outer segment, but the outer segment membrane protein already reduced. So this also suggests the idea that C8 of 37 is not involved in outer segment membrane trafficking. So now we think it's probably something wrong with protein synthesis or degradation. So we, we still try to do the experiment to, to detect, like to diagnose which part is really has a problem. So, but we, we, in our lab, we also try to identify C8 of 37 interacting proteins. That will tell us what cellular process the C8 of 37 plays a role. So uh, we did a series of protein, uh, proteomic analysis using mass, spec, uh, mass, uh, mass spectrometry. So we, uh, 
we did this mass spec uh, study on proteins that uh, immunoprecipitate by the C8 or C7 antibody from mouse retinas. And also, we did the uh, uh, pull down using GST tag C8 or C7 protein from bovine retinas. So, and then we did this five times. So, each time we, we have, we, we de definitely we have negative controls. So, compared to the negative controls, we have these unique proteins identified by mass spec, uh, mass spectrometry. Uh, so, this does a lot of proteins. So, and then we just think uh, if there is a real interaction, it should be show up multiple times. So, um, in fact, we don't see one protein that show up all five times. So, but we do see one protein here, it show up four times, even across different approaches from mouse and all my retinas. So, this protein is interesting. So, it's encoded by a known cone rod dystrophy gene. Uh, however, this protein, the function of this protein is not really well studied. So from this, if this interaction is true, we still don't know what's the function of C8 or C7. And for these three proteins, it's interesting. So the KTN1 is uh, on uh, uh, ER, so it's a membrane protein. It can uh, anchor the protein translation factor when complex to the ER. And in culture cells, knockdown of this protein can cause membrane protein synthesis reduced. And uh, these two proteins are just, uh, they both have uh, the ubiquitin activity. So it suggests that this protein is involved in ubiquitin uh, protein sound degradation pathway. So that from this study, it also kind of suggests two directions, protein synthesis or degradation. So we, we need to further to at least confirm this interaction and then have some proof what really went wrong in C8 or C7 knockout device. Okay. So in summary of all uh, my study, hopefully this is just last paragraph, just two more slides. So um, first we successfully uh, generated the C8 or C7 knockout mouse model. This model a good mouse model for future mechanistic and therapeutic studies for retinal degeneration um, caused by C8 or C7 mutations. And second, C8 or C7 knockout can cause um, the outside membrane de uh, sorry, the can cause me outside membrane protein reduction, which leads to outside membrane misalignment and eventually retinal degeneration. And third. C8 of 37 is in photoreceptor in a segment. So it can, uh, it may be involved in all the segment membrane protein homeostasis, but it's probably not involved in trafficking. And finally, uh, the mechanisms of retinal degeneration uh, in C8 of 37 deficient patients probably is shared among uh, other CRD patients with mutations in other genes such as uh, RAP28, which is one RDS, APAC4, uh, etc. Yeah, so um, finally, uh, I'd like to thank the people uh, involved in this study. Um, so uh, first, the, the people in my lab, they really work hard, and uh, especially Ali Sharif, uh, he is a great student in my lab, and the work I presented here was done by him. And, and of course, with the help with other people in the lab, especially Dong Wei Yu, also did a lot of work here. And uh, Robert Mark and the Brian Jones lab helped us uh, to do the TDM study as a core facility for the department. And Wolfgang Beer and Wu Xing shared their preliminary data on RAP28 studies. Um, and Susan, uh, so this is on campus, not in the run, this is in the run lab. So Susan and the team uh, just like a random core facility, help us to generate the C8 of 37 now how to mice. And uh, Chris Kio, JD Bellman, and uh, Dennis Wind, and uh, Dennis Wind, they help us to uh, study the biological properties of this protein. 
So I think they will present the data uh, for this part of the research. Uh, outside the university, um, but then a just lab at Duke University help us to localize the protein in photoreceptors. And uh, Bill Houseworth at the University of Utah help us generate the uh, AUV vector covered in this uh, C8 and C8. So we're going to use it to study the therapeutic, uh, uh, just go to that direction. Okay, so thank you for listening.